What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at this really cool Flagstaff Classic Travel Trailer. Now Flagstaff is widely known to be one of the better brands of travel trailers on the market. They have a lot of really interesting differentiations between them and your traditional travel trailers. One of those is the suspension they use. They use a torsion-based system instead of your traditional leaf sprung. But there's a lot of things to like about these specific units, so hang tight. I'll be right back. First of all, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,057 pounds. This thing's relatively heavy. It's also relatively long and tall. Has a cargo capacity of 2,378 pounds and it rides on twin 5,000 pound axles. So this specific setup is definitely something I would recommend towing behind a three quarter ton truck with a gas engine, something that has the payload capacity to be able to support the pin weight you have here, or even a single rear wheel one ton truck, something that's gonna give you again, the support you need for the amount of weight that's gonna transfer to the back of your truck. You can see right off the bat, this is gonna have a leveling system. Up front, you have your electric tongue jack. You're gonna have twin 40 pound propane cans and a dual battery box. Your ground control electric leveling systems right here and then you have additional jacks at the back. Stepping around, you can see it has all frameless windows. On this side, you won't see an equalizer because this runs torsion suspension, something that's very indicative of Flagstaff. Right here, you have a rack and pinion slide, and this rides on a 10-inch I-beam frame. You can see your back jacks for the ground control leveling system, 50 amp connection. This is your wet panel right here. Cable satellite connections. This is kind of interesting. I haven't actually seen this little panel before. Outside shower, outside of your water heater, and then you have an outside light, which I absolutely love. Back here, you also have a rack and pinion slide. This is gonna be storage that's underneath your bed. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is a rear bedroom model. Coming around back, all LED lighting. Again, frameless windows wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. LED lights up there and a full walk-on roof. Plus it has a hitch receiver here for an accessory rack or something you might take with you to carry bikes or you know, additional cargo. Be careful how you load something like that up. You don't want to exceed the weight. Typically it's 300 pounds, but again, you throw 300 pounds on the back of this, you're removing weight off the front of it, which is not a good thing. Right here, you have an outside shower, which is really nice. You have dual Moride step above steps. That's kind of different. Typically they'll give you kind of like a cheaper aluminum flip up step system and then they give you the flip down, but in this case they give you both flip down steps. Goodyear endurance tires on this unit. So you don't have to worry about upgrading your tires for a good while. Tons of stickers here, wired for solar, inverter powered, which I think most of them are, has the Torflex torsion suspension. It has the tire pressure monitoring system already installed, which is also really nice. But one thing I don't see is the Asdel sticker, so I don't believe this unit has Asdel in it. Coming back this way, you have a nice area here, which you might have power. If you do, you could probably hang a TV. If you don't, you can really just use this as storage. So that's kind of interesting. You have your TV mount right here, and then you have your power and your cable connection there. This is gonna be the back of your ice maker. There's really nothing else in there because this is gonna have a residential style refrigerator. This is gonna be the furnace. And here is your interesting storage access up front. It's not a pass-through storage, and it's really what I would consider to be minimal storage. Your electronic leveling systems here, your plumbing for your sink and everything's right here, so I guess it's easy to access if you have a plumbing issue. Something I noticed about this unit is it just doesn't have a lot of outside storage, so let's see if they make up for that on the inside of this unit. Let's take a step inside of this 832 CLSB Flagstaff. All right, so this is a mid-living room front kitchen unit. 
This is a relatively high-end travel trailer as well, so just keep that in mind. You have your recliners right here, and they are power. You have a love seat, which folds out into a bed right here. Lots of cabinetry up top. You have your day-night roller shades, which I absolutely love. So you have the blackout one here, and then you have more of the privacy one right here. Booth-style dinette, which also turns into a bed. So in this area alone, you can sleep two people here, two people right here, and you have storage underneath. Nice size front kitchen with a huge window up front, plus a smaller window above the three burner gas cooktop. Plenty of countertop space in here. Coffee station. Plus you're gonna have cabinets beneath. And this is actually accessible from that outside storage. So that is kind of cool. This looks like the spot for the trash can. And then you have three drawers right here. Has an LG residential style refrigerator. There's your roll out freezer, nice panoramic style fireplace, There's your TV, and it does appear to be on a swivel mount as well. You simply pop this up right here and the TV moves out of the way. So there's some additional storage and it's actually quite a bit of it. So this is about maybe about 16 inches deep, a little wider than the TV. You have your cable connections and everything right there. More cabinetry up top. Coming back this way into the bedroom area. But before we get there, let's take a look in the restroom. This has a porcelain toilet, which is really nice. That's very nice as well. Place to put your toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, stuff like that. Nice stainless steel basin sink with plenty of room around it. Nice shower as well. This has the AquaView shower miser installed. Very cool. Okay, lots of pantry space. I mean, a lot of pantry space. I don't know how you open this, to be honest with you, or even if you can open it. That might just be decorative, but it looks like you should be able to. I don't know what's going on with this. I'd have to ask them because I'm not sure. Medicine cabinet right here, some more storage there. Nice little light fixture above. Let's step into the bedroom through the bathroom. So, king size bed, lots of space around it. That's the real story here. Tons of room around it, considering it's a king size bed. Typically you lose all that space when you have a bed like this. And then you can see how this is notched underneath so when the slide is in, it tucks underneath here. Tons of wardrobe space, just a whole bunch of it. And then you have additional storage right here. So you do have quite a bit of storage in this unit, but the storage is pretty much all inside of the bedroom. You do have a washer and dryer connection here as well, which is nice. So I would imagine you put your washer here and then your dryer right here. I don't know if this one's wide enough for a dryer and there's no power connection in here. So if you're gonna do a washer and dryer, you might have to go with a combo unit that would actually go inside of that space. A little leery about elevating it off the ground like that. That's interesting to me. I like this little niche area here. You have your own entry exit as well to and from the bedroom. Nice lights above the bed. Very, very tall slide heights. Don't have to worry about hitting your head on that. You know, a question I have for you all is, if you have a door that leads in and out of your bedroom directly, do you actually use it? I mean, do you use it because you have it or do you need it? Because I see a lot of manufacturers doing that. They'll put a separate entry exit door just for the master bedroom. But is it really needed? Is it used? And what do you think when you see it? Is this something that you want, that you would require? Because for me, I usually exit the bedroom before I need to get in or out of the RV and I'll just go through the main entry exit. So I want to know your thoughts. Please leave them in the comment section below. I like this control panel. This is kind of that newer IRV Technologies control panel, which just gives you buttons to turn everything on and off, which is really nice. A lot cleaner looking. The only challenge here is things are separate. So you don't have like a slide up, down toggle button anymore. They're two separate buttons. 
Anyways, guys, I'd love to know what you think about this unit. Is this something that you absolutely love? What's your opinion on it? And this unit's gonna have a $56,377 MSRP. Actual sale price of a unit like this is either gonna be in the high 30s or low 40s. But if this is something you like, I mean, it's actually a very, very nice unit. My only gripe really is the fact that it is kind of limited in terms of storage overall. I would have expected it to have a little bit more pass-through storage or maybe even a little bit more creative storage because you just don't have a lot of outside storage, which means everything's going to have to either come in and be carried out or you just don't bring it with you. Anyways, guys, I'd love your feedback. Leave a comment below. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.